Hey everybody, Rez the Collector here, and what I want to do today is a Superman action figure perspective. Um, this is something I wanted to do yesterday uh, with my review of the new uh, Superman figure just released by NECA, but I didn't do it for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, it would have made that review so much longer, and it kind of would have taken away uh, from that new figure we just got. Uh, and I didn't want to do that. And two, of course, since I had the leg breaking issue, I was a little uh, irritated and uh, really wouldn't have been a good time to do the perspective. Uh, but now I've had a day to kind of uh, sit back and think about what I wanted to say and uh, to kind of get over the leg breaking issue. I've had nothing but uh, positive, uh, for the most part, uh, comments on the video. Uh, and actually, it's the video I have uh, that, uh, while it doesn't have the most views I've ever gotten a video, it's got the, the quickest uh, jump to a high number of views. Generally, my videos uh, kind of average probably around 100 views. I don't have a huge subscriber base. I've got uh, around 280 now, uh, and uh, I had hovered around 240 for quite a while because I had been basically on a hiatus uh, from filming reviews. Uh, now, I do have a few videos that I've done in the past that eventually reached higher numbers. I think one that actually even has a thousand views, uh, which is good for me. It's nothing compared to what a lot of the big time reviewers or even uh, some of the other reviewers in the Superman community, uh, such as uh, Stuart. Uh, generally, I've, I've seen one of his videos jumped like 10,000 views extremely quickly and uh, I think all of my videos together only have around 48,000, 49,000 views. So uh, I am nowhere near in that uh, category, and I probably never will be, uh, because my videos tend to be more organic and less planned. I don't do a whole lot of editing. I just kind of sit down and let the video's rhythm find itself, uh, kind of what I'm doing here. So what I said uh, at the beginning, and this is going to be kind of a Superman action figure perspective, but it's going to be focusing on a certain actor. But before we get there, I just kind of want to do a little bit of overview. Uh, now, of course, uh, anybody who's a Superman fan, uh, or really anybody, I mean, uh, he is uh, the original, so most of this information isn't going to be new to you, but just to kind of put things in perspective. Uh, Superman, of course, was debuted in 1938 by Joe Shuster and Jerry Siegel. Um, they had brought uh, DC to, I, I believe, what was called National at that point. Um, may not have been National, it might have been uh, Detective Comics, uh, which is where DC actually came from. from. Uh, and uh, they had finally gotten somebody to print their Superman character. Uh, of course, previously they had designed a character called Superman, but uh, he was more of an evil scientist and actually looked like uh, what we would eventually get in Lex Luthor. Uh, so, all that aside, uh, the Superman that we know and love, uh, the original before, uh, he basically evolved into... Uh, what we have today was debuted in 1939, in June of 1939, or 1938, my apologies, uh, June of 1938. Now, over the next few decades, uh, there were many people who took on the character of Superman, um, both in not only a uh, live action perspective, but uh, in the beginning, of course, on radio. Uh, and I just want to mention a few of their names because they are... Uh, deeply steeped in, in Superman's uh, mythology, and a lot of these uh, pieces brought parts of Superman out that uh, hadn't originally been part of him, uh, such as the radio, I believe, uh, first came up with Kryptonite, and uh, so many things that you come to know and believe and uh, have as the Superman mythos uh, were created after his debut. I mean, that happens with every character, but, uh, you know, so much uh, evolved from that uh, humble beginning in 1938. Uh, of course, in that humble beginning, he was uh, more powerful than a locomotive, faster than a speeding bullet, able to leap 
tall buildings in a single bound. He did not have the ability to fly, uh, but the ability to somewhat defy gravity in a really far jump. Um, to put that in perspective today, you basically have to think of the way uh, the Hulk gets around in the Marvel Universe. Uh, he, of course, doesn't have the ability to fly, but he can jump for miles, and it may as well be a, a flight power, um, except for the fact that when he lands, there's got to be a crater of some point or kind. Uh, so in the beginning, that radio uh, voice was Bud Collier. And again, forgive me if I mispronounce a name. I don't mean to. Uh, and he really brought, again, together a lot of the things that would become uh, just cemented in the mythos. Uh, from there, we got our first live-action Superman, which was Kirk Allen. Uh, and then we got to the 1950s, and we got George Reeves. Um, but it really took 40 years before we got what most of us would consider, consider to be the definitive Superman. And in 1978, uh, the Salkinds, a father and son team, Richard Donner and Christopher Reeve came together and really made us believe that a man could fly. Um, it took Superman from the radio, from the television, from the comic strip and the comic book uh, and put him on screen and really made you believe that this man was out there or in this universe could be out there. Uh, like the tagline said, you believed a man could fly. And again, for some of us, even though it's been decades since that movie, uh, Christopher Reeve is still the definitive Superman for us. Now, there have been uh, many people who have played the part since him, uh, from uh, the, the guys who played Superboy, uh, God, I can't even, Gerard Christopher and uh, Newton, John Newton maybe, I, I can't really remember his name, uh, to Dean Cain. Uh, to Tom Welling, uh, to the guy in the Superman musical, uh, to Brandon Routh, who was basically a, doing an homage to Christopher Reeve's uh, portrayal of Superman. It was basically a sequel to the 78 movies, uh, to the Superman that we have now in the Man of Steel movies and the uh, upcoming Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, Henry Cavill. Uh, but again, for most people, the definitive Superman, uh, when you really, if you're going to close your eyes and you're going to put a, uh, a person in the suit, it's really Christopher Reeve that you're seeing. And uh, it took 30 years, three decades from the point of uh, Superman the movie when Richard Donner and Christopher brought to us that belief uh, and that iconic portrayal that a man could fly. Uh, it took over 30 years before we got a real, true uh, representation of Christopher in that iconic role uh, in an action figure form. Uh, basically, I took notes, and for you know, those of you guys who know me, uh, me, me actually having prepared something is pretty uh, odd because it's not something I generally do. Like I said, I do in more of an organic review style where I can just kind of let things flow. Uh, but there was a lot of information that I wanted to, to bring to you guys while we take a look at these things. Uh, of course, we're almost nine minutes in, and you're basically just looking at a Superman bank, but I didn't want you just staring at, uh, at a white uh, review space while we, while we spoke. Uh, it wasn't until 2011, until Hot Toys, uh, a uh, Chinese company uh, basically based in, I believe, Hong Kong, uh, really brought us a real, true action figure of Christopher Reeve uh, that basically was spot on um, from the costume to the face sculpt. Uh, there was just no denying uh, that this was Chris. And we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at that because I have him right here. And we're going to see if we can't uh, do some panning here because uh, I noticed uh, and taking a look at my 
video I did yesterday that I basically cut off his head a lot. So I apologize for anybody who watched that and was like, really, um, why are we just looking at his torso? Uh, so in 2011, Hot Toys brought to us uh, the 1-6 scale Christopher Reeve. And this is uh, probably the grail piece for anybody who loves that portrayal of Superman to have in their collection. Uh, granted, it's an expensive piece. Um, when it debuted uh, through uh, Sideshow and Hot Toys, I believe it was about $200. Um, now, you're really not going to find this for probably less than three to four hundred. Uh, I picked them up for two twenty-five, I want to say, and I didn't even get the exclusive version with the uh, kryptonite chain. Um, which is basically the only difference between uh, the exclusive and the standard version. Uh, and I really didn't even know that when I when I purchased it. Uh, I still have my box still had the spot for it, but the chain wasn't there. And I actually had to look it up and I found out, okay, one was exclusive, one was not. And it's amazing what somebody would a will actually charge just for that chain. It's kind of crazy. But uh, getting back to point here, this was basically the first true representation of Christopher Reeve in an action figure form and it was just and is just amazingly spot on again from that face sculpt to the full cloth costume itself uh, the box and of course the stand that came with it which uh, of course I'm not displaying here right now it will be when he goes back in the case but it is basically the fortress of solitude um, it has a white base and of course it has the uh, the crystalline ice coming out at different angles that was uh, Donner's vision of the Fortress of Solitude uh, and this was really the first like I said definitive Christopher Reeve that we got now two years later uh, Hot Toys again gave us another Christopher Reeve this one being the evil version of Christopher Reeve from Superman 3. Uh, this one basically took that same sculpt and took that same costume but uh, did some color changes. Let me get these guys side by side here. Now as you can see uh, basically it's just a color change. The costume is darker, dirtier looking. Uh, the hair is more of a dirty brown instead of the black. Uh, he does have a five o'clock shadow. Now you do see that this guy is wearing a kryptonite chain, a necklace. Um, now I just talked about that, that I didn't have it. That one actually was made uh, by a very skilled gentleman over in uh, Europe, a very good friend of mine. Uh, and these can be purchased for your figure if you didn't have the exclusive version or you just want more. Uh, and of course you can get multiple colors, not just the green, but uh, red, blue, whatever you're looking for. Um, and if you would like uh, to purchase some of those, uh, you can contact Stuart Murray, uh, most, most of you, if not all of you. If you're watching my channel, uh, if you're a fan of my channel, then you definitely uh, know uh, of Stuart. You can, uh, of course, contact him through his own YouTube channel, uh, Stu Murray 47 or you can contact him on Facebook and uh, get you uh, a purchase or purchase for one of these amazing necklaces uh, that is just amazing to have. Uh, but again, in this was 2013, Sideshow gave us, Sideshow and Hot Toys gave us uh, that new version of Christopher Reeve. Again, this one is the, uh, the evil version of Superman 3. Um, now, Superman 3 is uh, a love-hate movie, and... Uh, one thing though that everybody can pretty much agree on is that scene in the uh, junkyard when Clark Kent and the evil Superman fight is one of the most iconic scenes to be in the uh, the Christopher Reeve movies. Uh, there were of course four of them and this is from again part three but uh, again love hate a lot of people but uh, that scene is pretty much universally loved. Uh, because it's just uh, it's just epic the way it goes down and at the end of course uh, the evil version disappears and Clark Kent rips open his shirt and we have the uh, Superman that we know and love back again so again this is 2013 and we at this point had gotten 
uh, two really amazing uh, depictions of Christopher Reeve as Superman, but these again are in the one sixth scale. So they're about a foot tall and uh, extremely expensive. I mean, you're looking at at the very least $400 there, and that is if you purchased them when they were first released. Uh, to find them now, you're gonna be paying quite a bit more. I haven't really priced the evil version, uh, but I have seen just in my, my eBay strolling uh, come across the first version, and like I said, anywhere from like three to four or $500 I've seen this thing on eBay for. Uh, now, I haven't really looked, looked, so you might be able to get it cheaper than that, uh, but you're still not going to be paying anywhere near what you would have paid in the beginning. Now, again, these were great collectibles to have. Basically, every uh, Superman collector out there uh, who could afford to purchase these did uh, because they are really uh, pretty much a must for your collection. Now, there are people out there that love Superman who just don't have... Uh, the money to dedicate to collectibles like the rest of us do uh, because they are, you know, family, you know, they have children. And, of course, children should always come first. So uh, I can't say that this is a must-have for every Superman collector. Uh, but if you do have the ability to get your hands on it, uh, pretty much you do. Um, so, again, one six scale foot tall. Uh, sorry, you guys can hear my dogs in the background. They pretty much <laughs> go off at whatever sound. Uh, but we really never got uh, a Christopher Reeve in a, a, what would I consider to be a standard collectible scale. Again, so sorry about the dogs, guys. Now, it was in, again, in 2013 that we got uh, news of a release from Mattel. Uh, Mattel had recently canceled their DCUC line, uh, DC Universe Classics, and uh, were looking to uh, move in a different direction with their DC license. So they started a line which they were calling the Multiverse. And in this line, apologize guys, one moment. Sorry guys, apologize for that. Uh, Mattel canceled their DC Universe Classics line and decided they wanted to go in a new direction with the DC licenses and they decided to go in a direction called the DC Multiverse. Uh, and one of the first announced figures that basically made the Superman uh, collector community go wild was a, uh, a Christopher Reeve figure. Because we had never really gotten one uh, in an affordable way. I mean, of course, there were the Hot Toys, but one, they were very large figures, and two, very expensive. And if you didn't have the money to sit down and purchase those, you really just didn't have a Christopher Reeve Superman figure in your collection. Uh, so when the Multiverse figures were announced, and of course we saw that we were going to get a Christopher Reeve, uh, the collector community kind of went crazy uh, with happiness. Uh, and of course, one of the first questions that was asked was about scale. Uh, because again, we had these uh, foot tall figures and nothing else. Now, of course, uh, some people had taken DCUC figures and done uh, customizations to try and get a Christopher Reeve figure uh, that they wanted for their personal collection, but it wasn't something that was, uh, you know, licensed and out there for everyone to purchase. Uh, it, generally, a, a customized figure is going to be kind of expensive, depending on how much work somebody puts into it. And it's basically a one-of-a-kind, or they might possibly do two or three, but considering the thousands upon thousands of collectors out there and having only two or three custom figures available, uh, it's only something that a very select and very lucky few are going to have. So when we got this announcement of the Christopher Reeve Superman the Movie action figure, uh, it was a blessing because it was basically our first affordable Christopher Reeve figure uh, to be coming out. And again, the first question asked was scale. Now, everyone ended up kind of being disappointed because... Uh, we found out that the scale was going to be in the four inch. 
um, and what everybody was wanting was a uh, six or seven inch scale Christopher Reed, which would have fit in with your standard uh, DC Director DC Collectibles or your uh, Mattel DC UC, uh, would have really fit in with those. Um, but of course we got the smaller scale, which is more on size with say your, uh, your Star Wars or your G.I. Joe or uh, some of the other Mattel lines or Marvel lines that came out would per fit perfectly in there. Uh, but for somebody who was looking for that that Christopher Reeve that would fit their six or seven inch collection just really wasn't there. Now, not that this figure wasn't well received because it was, uh, and it was really difficult at one point to get your hands on. Um, I really kind of kicked myself because I ended up uh, finally finding it at Comic-Con and uh, I ended up paying $50 for two figures. And of course, uh, some months later, I found it on Amazon for, you know, the standard $10. Uh, but at the point in which I purchased it, I had to have it. It was a Christopher Reeve action figure. Uh, of course, I had the Hot Toys, but this one was affordable. Uh, you know, it had an MSRP of $10 on it. And it was a must, must have for any Superman collector. So I got it. It was great. I still have one in package. And I, of course, have the loose one. But, uh, again, not in that, that scale that we were really looking for. Now, in, I believe, late 2014, uh, there was an announcement uh, at, I believe, uh, it was at New York Comic Con at the NECA booth uh, where somebody eagle-eyed had spotted Christopher Reeve in the classic Superman costume. Uh, they had spotted that, and they had spotted Danny DeVito as the Penguin from the second Michael Keaton Batman movie. And again, the collector community just lost its shit. Because, uh, again, we were going to get another Christopher Reeve. But, again, that same question popped up of scale. What was this one going to be? Because at this point, we had a 1-6 scale, uh, basically a foot tall, uh, and then we had the 4-inch scale. So was this going to be the one that was really going to give us that figure that was going to fit in uh, with the rest of our 6- uh, or 7-inch collection? And what we ended up getting uh, was not a 6- or 7-inch scale what NECA gave us and still all of us uh, in the community were, were uh, just basically uh, drooling and waiting to get our hands on them was a one-fourth scale Christopher Reeve uh, which again is huge so let's go ahead and get him in frame and you can really see uh, the scale differences <laughs> between all of these going from that four inch to the foot tall to the 18 inch figure. So our scale for Christopher Reeve was really all over the place. Uh, again, there, it was a figure that everybody had to have. It was a must own for your collection, uh, but it was again, a, a odd, not really odd. I mean, it, there's a lot of one four stuff out there. There's a lot of uh, one six stuff out there, uh, but it wasn't that one twelve scale that we were looking at, which would be the six to seven inch scale. Um, and but these did still fly off the, uh, I guess the the internet shelves and the store shelves to all the Superman uh, collectors out there because this was another representation of Christopher Reeve. Uh, and again, it was still uh, falling in a more affordable price range than the Hot Toys. Because uh, one, the Hot Toys became very difficult to find. And two, uh, they were double what this uh, one four scale or 18 inch Christopher Reeve uh, NECA was. Uh, so just about everybody added this to their collection. But we still did not get that six or seven inch Christopher Reeve. We had 
basically a lot of Christopher Reeve memorabilia at this point uh, because it again it had really taken from 1978 when we first believed a man could fly to uh, 2011 when these really started hitting the market Now I'm not gonna count like Migos or anything like that because those really uh, were more about the comic book versions than the movie versions now they may even be one that said uh, Superman the movie um, but really didn't look anything like Christopher Reeve uh, there was also a Mattel set uh, that was in the 1 6 scale that came out uh, that uh, one I don't own and two Really, for this video, yes, I could show it if I did have it, but uh, if you're going to go with the same scale uh, for uh, for 1.6 and you're going to show a figure in that scale for Christopher Reeve, there's no reason not to show the hot toy. Uh, because while you could still look at that Mattel 1.6 scale and say, okay, that's supposed to be Christopher Reeve, uh, it, it looks like a crack addict compared to uh, the hot toy version. The eyes are, like, huge. It looks like he's just been... Uh, let's change that to cocaine. It looks like he's been like on like on a six day cocaine binge, and while you know it's still a great collectible to have, uh, it was no way uh, on par with the hot toy. So here we are again in 2015, and we're coming towards the uh, fall season, or we're in the fall season, and all of a sudden this rumbling hits in the collector community about a seven inch Christopher Reeve uh, being brought out by NECA basically a uh, shrunk down version of this uh, one-fourth scale and this kind of kind of snuck up on everybody I mean there wasn't a uh, a lot of prior knowledge at least in uh, the communities that I'm in and uh, I mean most of most of these these people in these communities that I'm in, they uh, know about this stuff coming out. I mean, uh, it, it, there's not really anything that just sneaks up on us and all of a sudden is out. Uh, we know about it. We know it's coming. We're waiting for it. We've got the money put aside. We've made our pre-orders. Uh, there's nothing really sneaking up on us, but this really, really snuck up on us. We were finally getting a six or seven inch scaled Christopher Ree figure that was going to uh, be able to be in our collections with the remainder of these scale figures from uh, whether it be DC Direct or Mattel or even uh, when Hasbro had the license uh, and they were there was a uh, DC superheroes or uh, the DC collectibles versions that were coming out, we were finally going to get a Christopher Reeve figure that was on par with those. And it's basically what all of us had been clamoring for, uh, not only since the debut of these beautiful Hot Toys figures uh, and the following years, but really since the debut of the movies in 1978. I mean, this is, you're talking like, 30 what 37 years of really waiting to get a superman in these scale in this really this uh standard uh what we would think of today as a standard scale now i really uh action figures uh prior i would have considered in my youth to be the standard scale to be the the 3.75 or 4 inch uh because most of the stuff i had was you know star wars or gi joe and those were in that uh scale but uh of course, as years progressed, the scale changed to that six or seven inch. Uh, really, with uh, say like Ninja Turtles, they started getting bigger and bigger and bigger until that six or seven inch was the standard scale that uh, most of your action figures were going to come out in. So it really was just this uh, this really sneaky, uh, out of complete left field that this Superman figure appeared. Um, now, I spoke about this gentleman earlier about the necklaces, if you were looking to buy one, but uh, uh, my good friend Stuart uh, actually posted something in, in a, a group that we're in about uh, how this was coming out in like a week. And again, uh, I know I just got done saying it, but uh, to, to sneak up on us like this, to not really know that this was coming, 
uh, I mean, it was like a Christmas gift for us because it, it took away all of that uh, that hated waiting and waiting and waiting for this thing to come out uh, from basically from the point where we find out that it's in uh, pre-production and we've got uh, art stills and, and what have you to the point where the figure is produced is generally uh, several months, if not a year. Uh, but this guy popped up like a week later. Uh, basically, all of us jumped and got our pre-orders in and uh, within a couple of days, I got my shipping notice. And then uh, I think it was like a week, if not less, boom, he was here. He was delivered. Uh, I, he was delivered to my house yesterday. And uh, I'm, I was basically like the first person I know to get the figure. And I immediately, you know, did an unboxing and I filmed the review. And unfortunately, I did have an issue where his right leg uh, broke off at the knee because I... Uh, was messing with the articulation and I was taking a look to see if the boots rotated because this is a slim down version uh, as you can see between that 7 inch and that 18 inch uh, it's it's just a shrunken version of uh, the NECA 1-4 scale and on the 1-4 scale we do have a rotation in the boot so while I wasn't putting what I would consider an over amount of pressure on it Basically, I was trying to articulate the leg and see if that boot rotated and it snapped right off, which really sucks. Uh, and I'm trying to see if there's something that can be done about it. I have already purchased uh, a second figure, and I figure if uh, worse comes to worse, I'll just customize this one to be that, uh, that evil Superman 3 version that you can actually see standing right behind him. But finally, uh, it took from 1978 until the basically uh, third, fourth quarter of 2015 for us to get the Christopher Reeves scale figure that we've all been wanting for 30 some years. And it really amazes me just in the last, uh, from 2011 when we got the debut of the Hot Toy, uh, to now how much Christopher Reeve action figure material has actually been produced. Uh, because if you ask somebody, they'll be like, oh, really? Not really, but uh, I'm sitting here and I'm looking at five. Uh, we've got the two Hot Toys, we've got the, the two NECA, and we have the DC Multiverse. Now, there's also the 1-6 uh, the scale Mattel, which I don't own, uh, that's out there. So in the last few years, we've really gotten a plethora of Christopher Reeve action figure materials. And really, it's just been a great time to be a Superman collector uh, because he is uh, again for a lot of us that definitive version so that's what I really wanted to take a look at today basically the Christopher Reeve action figure form uh, just that definitive kind of look at what we've gotten in the last few years because I it really kind of hit me when I got it yesterday and again I didn't want to make this part of that other video because this has been an incredibly long video in and of itself uh, it, it deserved to have the review on its own, but when I looked around my collection room and I really thought about uh, the uh, action figures I had for Christopher Reeve, it really surprised me that I had this many, and the fact that they've only really appeared within the last four years. Uh, now, of course, there is other Christopher Reeve material out there, uh, basically in statue form. Um, one of them, of course, being a DC Direct uh, Christopher Reeve statue that is pretty pricey uh, and I don't actually own that one and there is a uh, premium format uh, sideshow statue of Christopher Reeve uh, again very very pricey it's about $450 $400 and, uh, and that is another it's a love-hate piece uh, a lot of people really did not care for the face sculpt uh, they did not care for the posing uh, now, from what I've heard is once you get the statue in hand, uh, really all of that changes, but it's not something that I really want to spend that much money on. I do have the standard premium format Superman statue, and I'm really happy with that. And in looking at the five figures I have sitting in front of me that are a representation of Christopher Reeve, I am really, really happy with what we've been given uh, by Mattel, NECA, and Hot Toys. They really, really stepped up and gave us really true versions of Christopher Reeve. 
And uh, basically that's what this perspective all was all about, guys. Uh, just taking a look at the, uh, the Reeve uh, merchandise that we've got out there. And of course, uh, really highlighting on that new NECA uh, seven inch Christopher Reeve figure. I do uh, highly, highly, highly recommend uh, that you get this figure in your collection because again, it's finally that true scale piece that we've all been looking for. Um, you can still get them on eBay as of yesterday because that's when I purchased my second one. Uh, otherwise, they're supposedly going to be hitting the shelves at Toys R Us uh, with a price point of about $19.99. On eBay, they're going for $29.99 because it is a bundle. Uh, at one point, you could have gotten several different movies with it right now. The only movie I could find uh, was Man of Steel. But just to let you guys know, um, you can, that Man of Steel is still in a, in a separate cellophane. And uh, I took it to Walmart yesterday, and they took it, you know, basically. I didn't have a receipt, but uh, it was still in cellophane, and I got 10 bucks for it. So um, really, all that it really cost me extra was the shipping, the $7.99 or whatever it is uh, to ship. Uh, and I paid basically $20 for the figure, and I was able to take the movie and uh, take it back to Walmart, or take it to Walmart, not back because I didn't purchase it there, because I have the Blu-ray. There was no reason for me to to have the uh, the DVD so for those of you that do have that out there that's an option for you for if you already own the movie uh, it is in its own separate cellophane wrapper take it to your local Walmart uh, they might just give you a gift card because you don't have a receipt but uh, I mean who doesn't go to Walmart and purchase stuff that ten dollars will come in handy at some point or if you don't have the movie uh, of course keep it and enjoy um, alright guys that uh, this was a really long video, um, but uh, it really was a subject that uh, deserved to have this long of a video. It has really deserved uh, to to be able to highlight all the great Christopher Reeve products uh, that we've gotten in the last four and a half years, coming up on five. Um, of course, uh, this is Res the Collector. I want to thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you made it all the way through this video with me. Um, Again, it was it was really long, but it really deserved to to have uh, all this information highlighted. Uh, please rate, comment, and if you're not a subscriber, subscribe to the channel. Again, uh, if you're looking for those necklaces, uh, you can contact uh, Stuart Murray 47 on Facebook or through his YouTube channel. Um, I highly recommend them because they are a great addition, a great accessory to have uh, for your Superman collection. And again, guys, I want to thank you for watching, and you have a nice day.